Asia Pacific Index Report is brought to you by RCN, a company of Alliance Global Investors. Reducing the, the uh, toxic soot and other particulate emissions from some of those belching factories. The numbers today would seem to belie that. The APR air pollution index, I'm just looking down, scanning the pollution readings, high, 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 very high, hitting 135 or 145 in central. Well, so much for that theory, right? Joining us this morning for a final chat in this hour, Christian Massé, chairman of Clear the Air, volunteer group committed to cutting air pollution here in Hong Kong. Christian, good morning to you. What's going on? Good morning. The API is very high. I don't uh, <laughs> buy this argument that we're cleaning our environment up. Uh, recently, there was a return of the blue sky, and this was due to the closing of thousands of factories in, Gu in, um, in Guangdong. Uh, this was initiated by the Guangdong government to uh, upgrade their industrial base and at the same time clean up the environment. However, you're right, on the uh, roadside, uh, air pollution is still very, um, very high. And what we regret is that um, there's not been any policy-driven in not enough policy driven improvement yet. Even when we were having the blue sky, this was circumstantial uh, facts, but not policy driven. When job losses are mounting and people's uh, most basic livelihoods are under the threat of extinction, initiatives like uh, cleaning up the environment, clearing the air, uh, take a very distinct uh, back seat, don't they? Yes, however, no one really disputes uh, the necessity in Hong Kong to, uh, to clean up the air. Definitely not, uh, definitely not the public. I mean, uh, last year, 1,600 deaths roughly were due to um, air pollution-related disease, and it cost the government over $2 billion. So uh, we definitely need to do something uh, to uh, keep on improving uh, the air. Uh, first of all, it would allow foreign talents to help us out of the financial turmoil and at the same time uh, we need to adopt um, clear guidelines such as um, the air quality objectives based on the WHO standard. Uh -huh. uh, but how does how you know the, the, this, this situation like this uh, basically nails down the government between a rock and a hard place how do you approach the transports in town and say you have to migrate your entire fleet from those dirty soot belching engines to the Euro 5 classification, you know, the, uh, the, the clean uh, state, of, uh, state of the art uh, emissions engines in X number of years when they're laying off people, they don't have money to operate, they've been dealing with extremely high fuel costs. What, 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 how, what, what, do, they, what do they do? Where do they point their money? Yes, uh, clear the air. Clear the air is going to keep on lobbying uh, the, le the legislature, the government, uh, the environment protection department, and definitely the government can help subsidize the phasing out of all diesel trucks. The transport department, the, the transport sector in Hong Kong, has been uh, reluctant to take appropriate action, but this is the right time to do it, and and the recession should not delay. Uh, further improvements in air quality. This is not the right time. We don't want the air quality to, uh, the air to develop into crisis proportion. Mm -hmm. What, uh, you know, I don't, I, I, oh, not too long ago, T. Boone Pickens, if you're familiar with that gentleman, was doing a big uh, uh, full court press in the Americas for the adoption of compressed natural gas as a standard. I was coming in in a taxi. I normally would want to drive, but I, I wanted to try a taxi today. Uh, to get to work, and I was asking him about the pricing differential. Uh, a liter of LPG goes for like 250 or three or something like that, down from four plus. I paid like 15 Hong Kong dollars a liter to fill up with 97 octane the other day. Why isn't the government doing more to advance the adoption of LPG, which I assume, Christian, is much more cleaning, clean burning than uh, usual is. gasoline or, or petrol, right? It is. This is a question, actually, that, I'm, that, I'm, uh, that has come to us many, many times. Uh, a lot of members of the public are asking us, why don't we have more LPG stations? And we keep asking the Environment Protection Department, and we don't have a clear answer. I, there, there might be fear uh, from the oil uh, lobby here to actually lose out on, on proposing LPG compared to uh, regular petrol. However, 
that needs to be uh, that needs to, to be considered and I would go even further uh, than uh, just uh, LPG, I think we should adopt electric cars. Um, we mm -hmm. have uh, talked to uh, an electric car manufacturer in Hong Kong who was saying that mm -hmm. actually this uh, was not about to be uh, adopted because there was no classification for electric cars in Hong Kong. But this just comes down to bureaucratic uh, decision. So we should uh, adopt compressed natural gas and, uh, and uh, definitely also electric cars and everything that makes the air uh, clearer. Yeah, I drove one of those uh, over at uh, Chinese, no, uh, Polytechnic University. It felt uh, kind of like a golf cart, but uh, it was clean burning. In Hong Kong, you know, where you make a trip of uh, five kilometers, ten kilometers on average would be the perfect place for that. Plug it in when you're done for the day right. and you're ready to rock and roll the next day. Uh, anyway, Christian, we'll actually, have to leave it at that. We will, uh -huh. go ahead. Uh, yes, actually, uh, Yes, I would just w wanted to uh, say that electric cars were, were uh, on only authorized in private uh, premises. What we need is to have them uh, on the road. Okay. Christian, uh, breathe easy. No pun intended. You have a great weekend. Christian must say, clear the air. A Belgrade Zoo celebrating the birth of rare white lion cubs. The two were born Tuesday. White lions unique to the uh, an area indigenous in South Africa. It's a genetic rarity. The last white lion was seen in the wild more than a decade ago, after which t uh, time they were technically extinct. The greatest population of white lions exists in zoos where they're deliberately bred for their color. How cute. Just in time for the holidays. And the financial crisis melting down, no pun intended here, the Icelandic economy, but failing to extinguish the Christmas spirit. One, two, three, yay! <laughs>